Hi, I'm Paul Friedman. Welcome to the channel. If you are here for the very first time, then a very special welcome to you. This particular channel is very different from other marriage help channels because I don't have a background in Western psychology. I actually used to be a divorce mediator over 22 years ago, which is how I began doing this. My practice was in San Diego, it was very lucrative, but when a couple asked me to help them save their marriage based on that I'm a communications expert, I'm good at negotiation, etc., I thought, why not try? And when I started doing my research, I was astounded at what marriage is really all about. It's very fascinating. And yes, we'll get to your topic, but it's very important to realize that we understand marriage at the Marriage Foundation as a way of enjoying the greatest life possible. When marriage is run correctly, because there is a science to it, you know there's a mechanical aspect to everything in God's creation, including marriage. And when you understand what marriage is supposed to do and how to gain those benefits, it's inevitable that you will have a joy-filled, harmonious, love-filled marriage. It would be like when you get a car, you have an expectation that it will take you to point B from point A safely, in comfort, with a good radio, and everything's working, and as long as you know how to drive the vehicle, there is no problem. It delivers. And it's the same thing with marriage. Now, as a divorce mediator, I, I had the opportunity that a lot of people who do what we're doing didn't have, which was I got to speak at groups where marriage was over. In particular, Second Saturday, which is a support group for women at the time and then later for men, who needed to have help putting together the divorce. And so I said, I can help save your marriage. And over the years, I developed systems and methods, etc., to really make the difference, not a difference, but the difference. We are not in the same realm of your traditional marriage counselors. We're way beyond. In fact, I teach people, therapists, clergy, and relationship coaches, I teach people by, by means of our course, online course, how to do it correctly so that you don't fail, so your couples don't fail. And in this particular video, you're gonna learn a lot because it's a good video. This is the five biggest mistakes that women make in marriage. And you gotta know what the mistakes are because on the flip side is the non-mistake, right? Mistake, doing it right. So these are big. Now, this is not your fault. When we come across a mistake and you go, oh my God, that's me. Don't go, oh, that's me. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're learning. You're here to learn. You're not here to be shown what an idiot you are or how you've messed up your marriage. That's not why we're here. We're here to help you have an incredible marriage. So the five biggest mistakes begin with number one. And this is from my own experience. This isn't from studies. Uh, I've been doing this for over 20 years. These, these are my own experiences and the experiences of the counselors here that we have at the Marriage Foundation. The biggest one is that women have this expectation, unspoken, that men are just like they are. In other words, men think the way you do, they feel the way you do, they consider those things that are important to them, to be important to their husbands. They think that they see life the same way. And you know, when I'm talking about it now, it's perfectly logical that I'm saying, 
that it isn't true because men and women are very, very different. But the mistake is that it causes so many misunderstandings and pain of frustration, pain that comes from thinking you're not being heard, your feelings aren't being regarded, and all like that. And having this standard, this filter, that your husband should, not, should know how much he hurt me when he said that, that he should realize how sensitive I am to that. When you have those feelings as your filters, you're setting yourself up for tremendous pain and suffering when you have the power to set up your marriage for so much joy, so much happiness for both of you and so much harmony. Frankly, because you're a woman, you have a much deeper connection to that part of yourself that counts, that part of yourself that drew him to you. That part of yourself is your heart. Women are heart-centered. I'm not saying emotionally centered. They're different. They're very different. You see, your heart is what we call you. You're the soul. This is not a religious discussion. Don't run away. You're a soul. We were brought up learning that we have a soul. And sometimes the argument would be, do I have a soul? Do I not have a soul? Can you sell your soul to the devil and all of that? And all of that is wrong because you are the soul. We know from every scripture, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Baha'i, doesn't matter, Hindu, you're the soul. What you are is spiritual and you have a body and you have a mind. And the relationship of the soul, body, and mind are what forms into you. And the pinpoint of that we call the ego. And that ego is very sensitive because it's mostly reflecting the mind and not you. And the reason for that, this, this may sound like a lot about why men and women are different, but this is an important point. You see, you've been taught as a woman to honor your emotions. It is completely wrong to even consider your emotions as anything more than what they actually are. But Western psychology doesn't teach what emotions are. They merely teach that you should honor them, that you shouldn't bottle up anger, for instance. Well, you can't bottle up anger. Your emotions are the product of the mind's calculations. And it's not combined with the heart. It's not like that. It is a superficial reflection of what it is perceiving as good, bad, indifferent, dangerous, healthy, and all of that. It is of the mind. Emotions are of the mind. Your husband and so what happens is because women are heart-centered, if they would push away the emotions and feel the love that they are, and here's where they get into trouble. What happens is women misapply the understanding and they think those emotions are the depth of them but the emotions are not the depth of them. They are the false shadow of feeling, true feeling. There's even a word for it in Sanskrit. It's called chit, C-H-I-T. And chit is that feeling of the heart. That's the true feeling of a human being. Those other feelings of the emotions are not true feelings. They're emotions. You got to separate them out. And so what happens is your husband doesn't have that connection to the heart. 
so he doesn't have the false connection to the emotions. His problem is anger. And so what happens is, or sensitivity, so what happens is you have this expectation that he will be emotional too. Well, neither of you should be emotional. You both should be lifting your marriage up to that level of true heart, of the soul. That's where marriage takes place and have that blend between the two of you as soulmates. So it is a mistake to think your husband feels all of those emotions too. He doesn't. He's in awe, but not in a good way. However, when you as a woman open your heart, he's in awe the right way and he's pulled towards you. So what happens, bottom line, is he's pushed away by the emotional outbursts, emoting. He's drawn in by the true heart, which is who you want to become. So the big mistake is thinking that he sees the world through the same eyes that you see them, and you then get stuck in the disappointment and discouragement because of your expectations. <laughs> we really got into that, didn't we? Number two, this is very mundane. This is not deeply spiritual like the first one. And that is that women believe, it's a mistake, that men are okay with criticism and complaints. And it's just not true. You're not okay with those either. But it seems to be accepted, like almost universally accepted, that there's no problem in criticizing your husband. Oh, maybe there's a better way to criticize him. No. Criticism is criticism. It is an attack. And it's going to not have a positive effect. It pushes men away. Now, I use that term, pushes men away, more than I do with men. I don't tell men this is going to push your wife away as often. And that's because men, believe it or not, are more sensitive. Women will react before they're pushed away. Men are just pushed away and it starts building and it gets worse and worse and worse and it could mean the end of your marriage when it builds enough. You know, there's no magic to the fact that there is a 50 plus percent divorce rate and the vast majority of those, and I don't care what the studies say, are because the men have become disappointed, discouraged, and pushed away. And it's easy to solve this. Stop criticizing and stop complaining. And you might say, well, that's life. No, it is not life. That is mundane life. It's not married life. Married life is loving behavior that comes from the heart. Number three. Now, this is a little bit of an extensive topic almost could have its own video. Number three is women thinking, wives thinking, that their husbands are needy or vulgar because they want to have sex with them. So let me start out by telling you that if anything is misunderstood about marriage, and everything is misunderstood about marriage. This is why you should be a subscriber to this channel so you can learn about marriage the right way. It'll change your life. Just look at the comments that we get. Sex is so misunderstood. So let's break sex down. Sex, raw form, is basically an act between two individuals, men and women, hopefully, not that it's evil, 
to be gay or anything, but the sex act between a man and a woman in its pure raw form is biologically driven. We call it procreation. And it's for the purpose of satisfying the drive to survive that we all are driven by our biology for self-preservation. This is basic stuff. You learned this in middle school probably. And so the sex act is for the purpose of producing more human beings, raw form. And here's where it starts changing. In all the scripture, God defines what sex is to be in marriage. It is a proof of love and loyalty that the woman has to give to her husband. Her husband is to remain faithful to his wife. But most importantly, it is a way of bringing ourselves together with our soulmate physically to enhance, to open up the hearts. Unfortunately, because we are a fairly primitive species, we think that it's sophisticated to have recreational sex, to use sex for the purpose of pleasure. So when you're married, think of it this way. You could have sex for pleasure, nothing wrong with it per se. When you're married, it's okay. Or you could have sex to use as a tool to bring yourselves closer together. And that's where it's at. Because the purpose of marriage is happiness. And what brings the most happiness is love. So when you use sex to cultivate that love, then you're on the right track. So your husband isn't vulgar. He's not needy. He's responding to his biological drive. And as a woman, your biological pure drive is just to create more creatures, more of us humans. And so it seems kind of weird that he would always want to have sex. And it's because you too have not made that transition to making love in order to connect on a deeper plane. So that's a big mistake that women make. It's the cause of many, many, many problems and feelings of rejection. Okay, number four. This kind of ties into that, but not really. Number four is not recognizing their husband's true needs. Now, most people go, well, his needs are for sex, food, and a little TV or games on the videos or whatever. And that's, those are not his true needs. His ultimate true need is the same as yours because he too is a soul, your soulmates. His truest, highest need is for love, not fake love, not mere expressions of love, but that deep love that only comes from learning how to love unconditionally, from learning how to open your heart. This is the main drive for our course for women that we have, which is very affordable. We also have books, these videos are great, but when your marriage is starting to get into trouble, you should go for it. And in the course for women, it's the pole star. Learn to open your heart. It's very, very important. And the mistake is that we don't even know about that in the world. That's the mistake. The true need is true love and happiness. It's universal. Number five, what a coincidence. It's not working on opening your heart. 
This has become such a challenge for women because of the women's liberation movement, which has defined sex as something that is an equal opportunity for both genders. And it's not the same for women as it is for men. Men, and there is a double standard. I didn't create it, it just exists. Men can have sex without attachment. Women, in order to do that, have to place barriers, have to protect their hearts. Naturally, a woman who opens her legs opens her heart. But when a woman has had more than one or two or three sex partners, those layers of protection come into place to protect the heart, the soul, from indiscriminate abuse. In marriage, you're supposed to completely open your heart, be all in. That's what all in means. It doesn't mean you contribute all of your income. It doesn't mean that you scrub the pots and pans. It doesn't mean that you make the beds. It means that you open your heart completely. Love and loyalty. And women, especially women, need to learn how to open their hearts. Men have a very difficult time opening their heart and they need to learn it too. But they are not faced with the same social pressures as women are. And so when a man gets it, which I'll be honest, it's harder for a man to get it. We have lots of men taking the course for men and they work at our techniques, the methods like the so technique and they go, okay, you know, I'm behaving better. It's not about behavior. It's about being you in the heart. And to be in the heart, you got to cultivate that. It takes practice. It takes education. It doesn't just come naturally. You would think it comes naturally, but this is not a natural world. This is a world of filled with temptations, dangers, resistance, com competition. It's not a natural world. If we lived in a natural world, which we don't, Everyone would be kind and nice and highly advanced and deeply entrenched in their heart's qualities. We are spiritual beings, essentially. Marriage is a wonderful place to learn how to be spiritual. And spiritual only means enjoying those gifts of God which are pure love and joy. It's a very simple thing, but based on where we are and where we want to go to, it may be simple, but it takes quite a bit of education and quite a bit of effort. Now, we're also training, I'm not the only one, we're also training people who want to be marriage counselors. We have a wonderful course online and hopefully we're going to have a huge team of marriage counselors all over the world. We already have people who have signed up in different countries, not just the US and not just England and not just Australia, but all over the world, even in countries where English is not their native tongue. And we're going to help change the world. And we would love for you to be part of that because the world can be filled with joy. Why not? Can be filled with love. Why not? We all have the tools and there's no better place to practice love and happiness than in marriage. It's one of the greatest gifts that God has given us. And hopefully you're going to learn by watching these videos to take advantage of this great gift. Again, I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. I am glad you came by. I hope you come by again. I hope you like this video. I hope you become a subscriber. And I hope your marriage is filled with love and joy. Love and joy. Thank you. God bless you. And take care.